Have you been wondering what's new in Crab Game's Christmas update? Well, you're in the right place. First off, there's two entirely new Christmas themed game modes, Snow Brawl and Dodgeball. Snow Brawl is basically just a snowball fight, where the amount of damage each snowball does is based on the amount of players in the game, with higher player counts meaning the snowballs do lower damage, and the game ending when either the timer runs out or there's only one player left, no matter the starting player count. Now, Dodgeball is kind of similar, but also pretty different. In this case, you're placed on one of two teams and put on a map with a bunch of piles of snow, like Snow Brawl. But in this case, being hit by a single snow snowball causes you to be eliminated instantly, and when one team is completely eliminated, all players on the opposing team make it through to the next round, whether they were eliminated or not. But be warned when playing these modes, because these snowballs have actual physics trajectories, unlike the bullets in Standoff. Speaking of Standoff, it's been removed. It's gone. Into the void to never be seen again. It seems that enough people disliked it, and Danny just yeeted it out of existence. So no more Standoff, I guess. Now it's time for one of the bigger changes. All the new cosmetics. First up, when you first open the game, you are gifted a present, which is basically just a limited edition box, except the only contents is the party hat. Although you can get this hat in all the normal colours and rarities, meaning you do actually have the chance to get a golden party hat, so this present is still pretty cool. And alongside giving all the players a present, Danny has also gifted us a brand new Christmas crate, with a mouth-watering 13 items to feed your crate opening addiction. And they are all very much, um, Christmas related? A few of these items are Santa's beard and hat, which are both common, Scarf and Rudolph Antas, which are both uncommon, Lucky Boots and Pumpkin, which are both rare and extremely Christmassy, Protagonist and Gingerbread Mask, which are extraordinary, and the legendary items in this crate are Lucky Hat and Elf Hat, which are both hats. Oh, and then you can now open your inventory and open cases in-game and change your outfit if you're in the lobby, which means that when you do open a case in-game, if you get something uncommon or above, everyone in your server can see what you got in the chat, which is very poggers. Wow, that was really cool. Do you know what else is really cool? Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends. That sounds like another silly mobile game for silly billies. Well, you're wrong! Oh. Raid Shadow Legends is one of the greatest mobile games out there, with over a hundred billion downloads, and that's way more than it has, but I don't care, and it's got 600 champions. Just look at this great gameplay, it's so epic! I like to play Raid Shadow Legends when I'm on the toilet, waiting for the next round of cram game, or running away from the government. Oi! You! Come here! Have you heard of the new boss coming to Raid Shadow Legends? It's called the Hydra and it has six huge heads. One of my favourite heads is the Head of Suffering because it causes its enemies, which in this case is you, to suffer. My other favourite head is the Head of Mischief because it causes chaos in the battlefield. Oh, and there's more. Right now, Raid is giving away a super limited edition champion based on the Sigma Chad esports player simple to every player. Personally, I actually quite enjoy Raid, as it allows you to do some casual gaming wherever you are, alongside being actually very high quality for a mobile game. So make sure you use the link in the description or my QR code, and you'll get the epic champion Tyrell, 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and an ancient shard. And all of that will be waiting for you here in-game. Okay. On with the rest of the video. Danny also has one final cosmetic surprise for us in store. You can now get backpacks in game. Although there is only four colors and they can't be open from crates, just bought from the item store, the fact that Danny is adding backpacks is a really large possibility for the game. With the future possibility of having other back mounted cosmetics, such as the bat from King of Hill, or even something outside of the game, like a skateboard. And the final cosmetic update is a fix for the gas mask cosmetic, which used to be equipped around the player's groin but now fits on the face as it should. Now, if you thought all of the new cosmetics was a big surprise, you'll be mind blown by what I'm about to to tell you. You can now do your part for Team C's and recycle your old items, getting rid of your stacks and stacks of cream Jeff hairs in exchange for some rags. Now don't ask me how you turn hair into rags, but this is the Crab Game cinematic universe after all, and nothing else in the game makes sense. So you can just ignore the how and just do it, simply by clicking on an item in the inventory and clicking on recycle. This will give you a different amount of rags based on the rarity of the item, but you should also know that when you do recycle an item, you can never ever get it back. So make sure you're really sure you want to recycle something before you do it. After doing your part for the environment, and recycling your spare items, you can then go to the main menu and click on the crafting tab, which will let you exchange 20 of your finest rags for a singular random crate, which is quite a lot of items for one crate in my opinion, but it's Danny's game so he gets to make up the numbers. Talking of made up numbers, here's 6 divided by 0 bug fixes, with the first being that any stuttering issues you had prior to this issue should be dramatically reduced now, hopefully making them much less noticeable. Alongside this, the bug where it doesn't register hits sometimes, you know, the main part of the game, has been patched, so that's good. Regarding the daily quest, you should also 
also not be able to get the same quest over and over again like some people were reporting and Danny has fixed some texturing issues. Leading on from issues we now have the issue of all the maps you're going to have to learn after this update with a massive 10 new maps four of which are for one of the new modes dodgeball. These maps are dodgy snow which is a snowy map with a big red line in the middle of it that prevents either team from going off their side. Apart from that it's pretty basic with a few obstacles and a very large open area. Dodgy ice which is very similar except here the floor is made of the tiers of hackers that have been solidified with the cold of the earth. Dodgy fields which is green and has an upper bit and a lower bit which really spices things up a bit. And the final dodgeball map is dodgy streets which is like dodgy fields except it's grey instead of green. Alongside these dodgeball maps there's also some additional maps for other modes. Ice crack which is a very cool large ice map with a large crack in the middle that can be played with most of the common modes. Sassy slope which is a race map that is very cool. It starts with a big icy slope thing that is incredibly fun and after that it's got some other unique stuff. Snow top a very cool map with a very cool tunnel. Definitely one of my favorite maps because it's cool. And these three maps that are desert based because everyone knows that sand is clearly very related to Christmas because Jesus carried a horse across the desert or something. Anyway there's sandy islands and small sandy islands which are stepping stones maps and then there's sandy stones for floor as lava. And the final map change is most of the maps are now winter themed and have snowballs in them that can be thrown at other people in order to do not back but do not do damage unless you're in the right mode. Okay now we have the gameplay changes in this update. To start off when you play hide and seek seekers are now frozen for the first seconds of the round to make the game more like actual hide and seek rather than London simulator. Alongside this practice mode should work better now with a bunch of practice mode issues having been fixed although it still doesn't work for some modes such as glass jump because you can't really practice them anyway so it doesn't matter. You can also change the input latency in game settings where setting it lower makes mouse movement more responsive by decreasing FPS and setting it higher makes the mouse less responsive but increases FPS. Finally, you can now type in free cam without moving.